Let's start. Should we start? Okay, that's fine. We'll just... Okay, uh, today we are very happy to have uh, Peter Karoti uh, talking about Kriber WL algebra and defects for application. Well done. That's all. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, let me again apologize for coming late uh, because of the flight delay. We'll start with a more excuse. So I'll talk about this preprint, which I wrote myself uh, this summer. The paper itself is very short, but uh, it's very dense. So I'm going to try to explain the background behind it and what all these features mean. Um, so I'm not assuming any knowledge in, uh, well, deep knowledge, deep knowledge of supersymmetric H theories or separate solutions. I'm going to review some of that. But I, I assume that you guys know some geometry, which I'm obviously using. So, uh, yeah, this is the, it all starts with the work by Sabrick and Witten. Uh, so they provided a, a solution uh, for the mass spectrum of DPS particles or DPS ions for n equals 2 gauge theory in four dimensions uh, in the infrared. Right? So, um, the, so it's, a, it's a gauge theory with four supercharges in four dimensions. And then, so this formula given for, uh, for, the, for the example when the gauge group is SU2. So the, uh, the typical potential in the UV Lagrangian has the form, uh, it's a trace of some commutator, and then the theory is at its classical vacuum, provided that the vacuum expectation of the scalar is proportional to the, uh, to the, uh, to the car time. And then, uh, so, so there's a moduli space as you vary this vacuum expectation value, and then you can study what happens in different corners of the moduli space. Okay, so cyberquitting solution is the uh, geometric construction that underlies the topology and geometry of this moduli space. Uh, so the natural coordinate is the Casimir at trace phi squared. So trace phi is zero, that's SU2, and trace phi squared is the coordinate of the moduli space. Now, uh, the theory uh, exhibits S duality, which is a powerful symmetry, uh, so it'll be sound, yeah, so it is there, and then you can use it, you can, you can use it to define a uh, second set of coordinates, which are called dual or magnetic variables, which are called AD. So there's a holomorphic function, which is called free potential, F of A, that depends on, well, A is the same A, A, A is here, and then it serves as a, uh, as a generic function in, in the sense of Hamiltonian mechanics, right? So you can treat the uh, pair of A and the dual as the, uh, as the canonical degree of freedom of some integrable system, as it, as it turns out. Okay, and then uh, you can, using perturbation theory, you can compute corrections to that free potential, and in one loop order, the corrections look like this, where lambda is the, is the, dynamic, is the dynamical scale. So A, A dual has the term which has the log, and A, A, A itself is, goes as square root of u. So uh, you can see that in the, uh, in the space A and the, a and the dual in this two-dimensional complex vector space, there is a monodromy. So in fact, if, as you go around infinity in the U-plane, uh, because of the log, there's a branch cut, uh, there's also branch cut in the, in the square root function, you, you will generate some monodromy. Okay? So it's a, it's a monodromy for the, for the solution uh, in a classical regime, right, at U equals to infinity. Uh, then it turns, out to be, it turns out that there are two more points where uh, points in the modular space with a non-trivial monodromy. And the sort of full topology of solution looks like this. Like it's a, you, you can think of it as a uh, elliptic vibration over the complex plane. That monodromy is for the two variables A and A. Correct. Yeah. So you, you start as a two-dimensional vector right? mm -hmm. in, in, in that dimensional vector space. Right? So, uh, so there are three. So it's an elliptic vibration. So at a general point, the fiber, you know, the fiber is an elliptic curve, uh, which is given by this equation, right? So as you so it's vibrated over the U plane. Uh, and uh, there are three points. So one of them we just discussed, U plus infinity corresponds to classical regime, and then there are two quantum non perturbative points. There is U plus one and U plus minus one, the so-called monopole and the dying point. So um, then at those points, the torus either either A cycle or B cycle or some linear thing in or like the sum of the A and B cycle that generate. And uh, yeah, so the corresponding theory of the integral vanishes. So according to separate Newton, masses of the UPS particles are given by period integrals of some whole morphic one form. Okay? And uh, yeah, so basically that is the answer. Like if you want to, if you want to know the answer of the UPS particle for the given charge, you just select a certain cycle in the homology basis, and then you you you, you print this way. So 
would also do for with condensed matter, because the matter seminar, I have a paper with condensed matter colleagues. Uh, so maybe some of you know Alex Kaminev, who wrote a paper several years ago. Uh, it's not about cyber equipment, but we use the cyber equipment solution. And in appendix, I do the review. So you're welcome, welcome to read that. OK. Now, I want to talk about some uh, properties of, uh, well, landscape of supersymmetric and equals gauge theories. I took this figure from a paper by Nikrasov and Peston. Uh, so there are many different n equals to gauge theories known by now from different methods. And sort of and this three Venn diagram, like this Venn diagram kind of says, says, says in a picture was more than uh, what you can say. So there are several uh, ways to approach n equals to gauge theories. And some, there's a lot of this big family of theories which can be understood in different ways. So I'm going to focus on this approach here when you can, can have some quiver of gauge theories, so we'll have a quiver diagram uh, associated to, to the degrees of freedom, like there will be hypermultiples and vector multiples. They will correspond to uh, well, arrows and nodes of the quiver. And yeah, basically you're going to do some localization computation here um, using techniques developed by well, people in the list. Uh, yeah, so that's that's one approach. Another approach is so-called class S theory, developed by Gayota and then later uh, Although in Gayoto and Chicago, they studied dualities between those theories and uh, uh, and conformal uh, conformal field theories in two dimensions. Okay, and then there's also geometric engineering, the Calabiao or geometric engineering. So you take say so type two A on some local Calabiao, right? And then as you compute on the Calabiao, you lose three quarters of your supersymmetry. So if you start off with thirty two supercharges, you're left with eight, which is exactly what you need for. Uh, n equals two theory for the So I'm not going to review any, everything, so I'm going to focus on some aspects. In fact, the paper is written about single theory uh, of type A, but uh, I, sort of, I, 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 sort of, I do a lot of things with that. So basically, there are two, two types of people, right? Some people like to classify things, make long lists, and some people like to take just one particular theory and say a lot of stuff about it. So I'm more of a second kind of guy. Uh, so, so you have overlap between uh, the, the serial. Uh, correct. Uh, there is no overlap yet. Okay. Like, you mean the, the space time n equal to serial or the what does she point? Just uh, four D n equal. Just uh, overlap for four D n equal to serial. These are all four D n equal to serial. Yeah, I know. But the four Calabi or three four, we have also from the what is she point perspective, and the H T also have a uh, you know. But you so will assume, there's so a 5D version, there's a 6D version, if that's your question. That's not his question. He's saying if, if you're doing type 2 with the type 2 string on a CY3, there's a there's a two-dimensional world sheet. Is that related to the AGT dual? Oh, uh, I don't think so. No, 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 it's not. So you overlap just the four n code to 4D series, right? Yeah, like yes. standard geometric engineering. Can you say yes. a bit about the overlaps between these regions? Well, uh, any Lagrangian theory that cyberquitin solution studied lies over here, right? It, you can approach in any way. Right? So, and there are the non Lagrangian Gaiota type theories, you know, which are either not here or not there. And then, uh, well, you can take some exotic Calabiao, which doesn't give you any process curve. Okay, but, but your actual point here is that everything you say in this talk could work for like any three of these classes? Well, no, so look, uh, for some of it. So, uh, as you'll see, I'm going to develop some algebraic structure, uh, which, which is associated to quiver gauge theories. So, you have to have a Lagrangian at least in one frame. Okay, so, so it's not a very generalist like class S or something. But so, so, as you know, so if you say go down the three dimensions, then they, uh, some theories which are of class S, they have uh, mirror duals which are Lagrangian. Yeah, so okay. in that regard, it's, uh, it's more pro. Any questions? Yeah, so, uh, and then, so, so Nikita Nikrasov coined this term EPS CFT. So said, everything sounds better when, it's, when it says XYZ slash CFT. Right? So, um, so in HT is an example of that. So what it, what is what is BPS CFT? So physically, it's a certain connection between observables of well, chiral observables, BPS observables of an equals to gauge theories, with uh, some CFT correlators of conformal blocks. Right. So there's a computation on the left, there's a computation on the right. Uh, mathematically, uh, you can think of if you study some structures on moduli space of well, instantons or some sheaves with some framing, and then you using that and you, you construct a vertex operator algebra or Q vertex operator algebra uh, based on 
that geometry, right? So we sort of you derive it from that geometry. So in this case, in this sense, all math literature about PSC fee sort of is more constructive. It's like you don't just compute things on the, things on the left and on the right. You rather derive the algebra from well, from your geometry construction. And I'll, I'll try to show some of that. And then, yeah, so the most famous example is the HP. So you take in uh, an equals to gauge theory, uh, and then you will uh, you map it to you map its uh, conformal uh, partition function to a conformal correlator or conformal plot in uh, of some Hugel theory or some other theory. So uh, here's an example. Uh, so uh, there's some this is a technical de de detail. So your Okay, actually, here it's just shown for five dimensions, but you can ignore the circle. The, uh, you need to subject your theory to certain supergravity background. In this case, it's uh, so what, what you do, you take a two plane in, in, inside of the space time, and then you turn it into a cigar. So, uh, like the, so, so that the few fluctuations are localized at the origin of that cigar. Uh, and in terms of Lagrangian, it's very concrete operation, so you just replace phi by uh, this operator. So, uh, the, you replace it by the phi plus the uh, circular derivative around uh, a secret angle which rotates one plane plus another derivative that rotates another plane and then you weight with two dimensional full parameters epsilon epsilon two there if you vary the parameters of that symmetry. Okay. And then because of the, because of this localization everything sort of localizes at the origin of the space time and then you can sort of that effectively kills the uh, this uh, translational modes of instantons and uh, size modes, so you're only so left with, with the interior degrees of freedom. So you get this theory. After that, the modular space becomes uh, hyperkähler, and then, so basically, you have 8, not 8, not, so 8k, not 8k minus 3. So minus 3 is cancelled by, by, the, by the. Okay. So, so each is as that. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you the example and explain. Yeah, so you match the data of the uh, of just the formal field theory with the data or the corresponding vertex and vertex algebra, like W algebra, with the uh, data of uh, of, of supersymmetric field theory. So are you going to use DPSCFT for anything besides the AGT correspondence? Yes. Okay, so could you just so, say what the statement is? Because I've never understood what Microsoft says BPSCFT, what the actual statement is. That's what Microsoft is about. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, right. yeah. So, like, like I said, so the paper is short, but it's, you know, there's a lot of content to it, so I'm kind of bringing it, bring it in a bit. Okay. Uh, so for now, think of, uh, because there's HGT, there's a free frame, and then you can, like, there's some dual frame where you can also play this game. You might be in CFT, but uh, okay, anyhow, so that let me uh, do all this. So when it's different, like, like that's good. It's a certain correspondence, but HD is one of the one of those values. So, and when you say what the content is, are you going to say it mathematically or physically? Both. Okay, perfect. Good. Good. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I since there's some somebody that I want to spend too much time, so I'm not going to be talking about HD too much, but let me just flash some slides. So, uh, the one of the most famous examples we take what is known, and it goes to star theory uh, with gauge group SU two. So this is a um, Maximum supersymmetric n equals four supreme mills with a massive uh, hypermultiplet. Uh, Adjoint hypermultiplet has mass m and the gauge coupling tau n mills. And that, according to the duality mapped to map to uh, new build theory on the torus with a puncture. So that's the space time with theory leaves. And then when you compute conformal blocks, there is a, a sewing parameter, right? So there is a certain prescription of how to do it. And that sewing parameter is exactly equal to the Exponential of two pi a times the times the coupling, so it's the, like, the action on single young uh, And then, so from string theory point of view, it, it works like this: you take uh, m theory on uh, a four manifold times the curve, so that's exactly the curve. And yeah, so you do this on twisted simplification uh, of, of, of the of theory in the five frame, which is the non-Lagrangian two comma zero and six D theory. So. They are classified by A, A, B, and E types, right? So it requires it to be an A, B, uh, there's an A, B structure. Uh, and yes, yeah, so and that leads to certain n plus 2 theory on M4. So to get this guy, uh, n plus 2 star, yes, you two, you take A1, 2, 0, 6 theory, and then you do the multiplication. So that's OK with the uh, like question on day. And then uh, we can do two, two computations. You can compute an aggressive partition function here, 
and conformal correlates over there, and then by now, that's been seen on some checks, that works. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, the uh, sort of, you know, and now I start, start to talk to mathematicians more, so I kind of work at the math department. So that's not how mathematicians like to prove things, right? So they actually want to prove it. Um, and uh, they already done this by, well, they're this gentleman, so Schiff and Nasser and the boot, who is, you know, uh, at MIT right now. He, uh, so they have a certain proof for theories with no fundamental matter. So as long as you have you no know, single gauge nodes or quiver with gauge nodes without no matter, like you don't have this matter bundle that supposed to cause things. Then they, they have a proof. Uh, and uh, like I said, so the proof is sort of constructive. So they derive the uh, scalar product uh, in this, uh, well, they derive it without the algebra in a certain limiting procedure, which I, I hope I'll be able to explain. So that's one thing, and then there's a different approach by Kimura and Paston, so they did the physics papers, uh, and then the proof is a bit asterisk because, well, like, they're just sort of doing it in a different frame. So, so yeah, so, so it's a Kimura Paston is a different version of AGT. So if you do the like gauge theory, it's a standard AGT, you get one CFT. If you do Kimura Paston, right, you get another CFT, and they're related by some, that's why it's just one. Let's see, S duality on S C. Okay, we, we will get it. It's, it's a teaser for the for the Yeah, uh, now the uh well, I shouldn't take an idea. So what one understands is why it's a geometry code. Right? So there will be some geometry in the talk that so we know we will be okay with that. So we want to describe counting of instantons uh, in terms of quantum homology, quantum K theory of some nice spaces, right? So like a DHM homologized space. Right? So you want to see how these algebras they emerge from 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 quantum geometry. It's great. If you're familiar with uh, no, those are some normal Pitton variants or some counting of curves or some quantum geometry, it's very closely related to, to BPS. Yeah. At least the way I see it. So yeah, and then uh, you've probably seen this uh, yeah, so uh, if you read papers on representation theory, uh, people say these names like the elliptic hole algebra or a quantum toroidal algebra of GL1. This is, it's, it's a double affine thing, right? It has two affine roots. Or double affine Heck algebra for GL infinity, or dingo Haramiki algebra, or Greenfield double of shuffle algebra. So they're all the same thing. It's the same algebra. The way they identify it, you get, it, you get it some trivial. So there's a paper, so Andre wrote the paper, where it's sort of, he, he does the side-by-side -side comparison with all uh, yeah, so I'm just going to call this algebra E. So it's some large infinite dimensional algebra which is responsible for everything. And then those uh, W, uh, w algebras that appear here in, in those CFTs, they arise as certain representations of that big algebra. So it says E contains all W algebras. Of what most people say. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to worry. Just uh, follow whatever one Okay, yeah. When you start 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 to get bored, let me know. Mm -hmm. I try to put exciting pictures. So, um, yeah. So there's some really recent papers again. So if you have, yeah. Well, um, so all of them are very well written. So that's physics paper, Gayot Rapchak. Then there is a math paper. Uh, it's sort of more for algebraic geometry based, right? So they study a certain cohai, the cohomological from algebra, uh, which arises from some Calabiao. Three category. Um, that's really sort of two geometry of the DHM modular space. And then sort of like derive what the uh, what the what the corresponding work of separate algebra is. And then there's this quiver double algebra constructions by Kimura and Peston. Uh, and then there's an unpublished paper by Nikrasov. So there's a published paper by Nikrasov, the Magnificent Four, and then there is an unpublished paper where he claims to have found the like kind of the mama algebra as he called it. It's a big algebra with many, many parameters. And he thinks it's like the ultimate thing, like the, the biggest thing that 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 uh, But yeah, you know, the way Nikrasov does things, he puts in invariant parameters, right? So you have the D8 frame, right? So it's a nine-dimensional space, um, and then you can put four epsilon there, right? And then uh, you only have some Calabiano conditions, so you need to put a constraint that the product is equal to one, the sum is equal to zero. So that's three parameters, and then he knows the way to get two more. There's sort of one non-geometric parameter that somehow writes with companion B field with some flux, uh, and then there's there's the fourth one. So he has an algebra with five parameters, 
I'll show you the algebra with two, but we'll go through the numbers. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then uh, another part of the dictionary is this large unlimited. So, uh, sort of the ideas of course, they go more in half for this topological idea is safety. So, we have some kind of transition, a couple of brains. Uh, brains, there's a resolve side and a deform side. You put brains, and then brains back react, and we change the geometry. Uh, so, you can understand this duality in EPS CFT as a large end transition in, in that way, as I, I hope to be able to show it. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit lengthy introduction. I just want to show you some more spots. So, the, uh, this is the way I approach this, this, this uh, correspondence. I, I see it in three different, uh, so the three distinct uh, stats, three distinct studies, right? So, Mathematics. So there's a mathematical story here, which is you know uh, pretty independent. So people study some uh, the representations, some modules of algebras like double over Hecke algebra. Well, I'll give a definition of what it is. Uh, and then uh, yeah, so the double over Hecke algebra for finite can, that's a JLN data, and then you can take n to infinity limit, uh, sort of that that conifold kind of transition, and that leads you to this algebra E that I showed you. In, in, in one of the slides, so uh, it's because it's meant and the representations of Dacha are manageable. There are some some modules that have some geometric meaning to them, and then you can see what happens in this large limit. Uh, and in Gesch theory side, this is standard Kumarbaha, which you know we can interpret in different ways, right? So I wrote a paper with Strapa on a more of the uh, Gesch theoretic way. So Lee and Castello have some. Topological twist added to it, but essentially it's the same story. And finally, it's, uh, if you followed my paper, so I work on integral systems quite, quite, quite a bit. So there's a duality between uh, several quitting theories and, inter and integral models, like for example, n equals to star theory is dual to n equals to star theory with the H group n is dual to the n part of the larger model. So it's a basically it's a it's an integral it's a many body system. We have particles on a circle. And then every particle interacts with everybody else, and the potential of interaction is some elliptic function. There's some twice twice pay function, but the model is integral, it's, it's actually solvable, it can find all the integrals of function, both classically and you can find the quantum spectrum. So as you send n to genes, you'll get the continuum description, which is known as ILW, intermediate long wave hyd hydrodynamics. So it's a one plus one dimensional hydro model. Which has infinitely many integrals, of, uh, it, 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 which is which is integrable in standard view of sense. You can quantize that. So that's uh, like a continuum. Theory. Hmm? It's a theory of fields. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like you know, have one plus one, like have a factor like two of the field. Mm -hmm. You can quantize that and study the quantum spectrum. So you know the quantum spectrum of that model has this uh, algebra symmetry. Okay. Uh, yeah. So all uh, large and limits are manifest in. Description. Okay. Okay, so, and now I'm going to switch gears. So let's try to something more robust. I want to talk about a little bit about quantum geometry. So uh, the, the, uh, I'm going to talk about quantum K theory of the Kajima Kuro varieties. So a quiver, a quiver is this diagram here, right, with vertices and, and links. Um, yeah, so there, there are vertices and there are circles and there are squares, right? Um, as a physicist, you can think of it as a quiver for the uh, quiver for some quiver gauge theory. But let, let, let's describe uh, let's describe some geometry that underlies that picture. Right? So we can take a uh, space of all quiver representations, basically all the rectangular matrices of the corresponding dimensions. So there's a home from CV1 to CV2, uh, and so on. Um, so we define the moment map, which is the map from Quotangent bundle to that space to sort of double the number of arrows, right? So, like that, that the uh, link here with no arrows means there's a one arrow one direction and the other arrow uh, in, in, in the other direction. So, that maps to the dual of the algebra G, where G is the product of all VIs, right? Um, so, that's the moment map, that's the standard uh, hyperkeller moment map. And uh, the quiver variety is the, well, is the symplectic reduction. Of the inverse of the zero locus of that map by group G. Okay. So uh, then there's an isomorphism group here. So it involves the standard. So QIJ, this is just the incidence matrix of the quivers. This is just some numbers. Um, 
GLWI are framings on every node. So in, the, in this case, there's only one framing. And then you uh, cross it with the uh, group, the multiplicative group, which is the dilation of the fiber, right? So you get the potential model, so you can multiply the coordinates in the fiber by non-zero constant. So we can will call it we'll constant each bar. Okay, and then little t is a maximal form. So here's uh, what we're going to do. So there's a classical p theory uh, of x of two, two variety uh, is, for, is formed by tensorial polynomials of teleological bundles and their duals. As so it's a ring, you can tensor by a bundle, you can tensor by its dual by any symmetric power. So for example, if you take a potential bundle of the Grismanian, uh, it's a quiver of type E1, right? So there's a, only one node in uh, one circle in one box. You have uh, one is k, and the other is n, so that would be per k sub n, k comma n. And if you say take, take this class tau, which would be the uh, second tensor power of d minus third uh, skew power of the dual, the dual, and if little s's are the churn classes, then there's some churn polynomial here. Right, so, uh, and if you can multiply multiplication of the classes, correspond to just multiplication of these polynomials. So that, that's, the, that, that's the classical key theory. Okay, now I uh, want to quantize this stuff. So we're going to use, we'll do it using uh, so-called quasi-maps. So uh, yeah. more standard ground, we can look at it with stable maps. Uh, quasi-maps are more appropriate for uh, for, for catching a group variety. Because I mean, it looks like for any, uh, you, you, you'll see from the definition. So this is a formal definition. Uh, uh, I don't want to spend too much detail, so basically it's the, it's all the sections of this bundle, so it's, these are polynomial maps here from the base curve, which in, this, which in our case is uh, will be P1, to the space M times a dual, FM plus a dual tensor H bar, where M is uh, with the space of all, all homes from uh, W to D, uh, in the same with the same node plus uh, cell homes for every uh, uh, for every node of the group. What do you mean tensor H bar? So H bar is just a constant bundle that corresponds to the uh, just a constant bundle with a, with a weight H. Okay. Um, and um, the degree of the quasi map will be a double of the all this double of this vector guy. So uh, yeah, now we uh, now we describe the modular space of that, right? So it's a modular space of quasi maps of all the degree D. Well, the way, the way it's done, we introduce the evaluation map of quasi map at point P on that base curve, right? And then uh, the, uh, so the way it works is that in general, you don't get, so the reason why it's called quasi map, you don't always get a uh, map to X, you rather get mapped to some quotient stack, right? So the brackets, they denote the stack. And then uh, to define the proper map, you need to, you need to provide some stabilization, okay, that's stability conditions. Uh, you need to exclude, exclude singular points, et cetera. For example, if your point P here is over here, you want to evaluate your map at point P, and it happens that the map is singular, you need to do the blow up, right? So you, you go on to P1, you go with a chain of P1s, uh, so as, as many as you need to get rid of the singularity, and then you leave the point P to, uh, uh, to, to, to other P1s, right? So in, 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 in this case, that's a bit, yeah. Uh, so you need to avoid, avoid singularity by doing that. So once you do this, do this uh, procedure, your quasi map becomes a proper map. Yeah. Um, now, with, it, with this in mind, you can compute the uh, vertex function. There's a long formula here, which is essentially the equivariant k theoretic push forward, like this is the equivariant integral of the modular space of quasi maps. But because you work in k theory, we need to do push forwards, right? So, uh, here in brackets we have so there's a certain symmetric virtual structure sheaf, um, right? Uh, and then you take your class tau, like for example, you can take the class tau from the Grassmannian. Uh, you do the evaluation of p1, and then you, uh, the scale the scale product here is just the uh, well, there's, there's a canonical pairing, uh, uh, which you can define just by tensor product of the uh, by all the characteristics of tensor product of these two sheets. Okay, and then you do evaluation, assuming that the map is not singular point P2, 
then you could have pushed forward and then evaluate it. Uh, all right, so, and then you add uh, the tuple of variables for every uh, node, for every vertex on the quiver, you add a quantum variable, z. So uh, there are as many z's as the uh, number of vertices in the quiver, right? Uh, so this is so of of variables, of, of quantum variables, and then you add them as weights, weights over here. So for class tau, there is a vertex function that depends on quantum variable z, which is given by this localization form. And, uh, and then, then you need to, to apply the localization theorem to be able to compute what this is. Right? Uh, so we define quantum, quantum case theory as a ring with the following multiplication. So you take the zeros of approximation is just a fancy product, and then there are quantum fractions. If you wish to say your Gromov of Witten quasi map invariants, whatever they are, and then there is a certain, there is certain prescription here. So basically, it's uh, we need to define this operation by quantum multiplication by a sheaf uh, by some class f. Uh, what you're not going to this, but it goes, it uses a certain uh, gluing operator that allows you to, so whenever we have uh, a nodal singularity, or sort of, if, when you develop a nodal curve, when you develop a singularity, the gluing operator allows you to cut it into two non-singular curves, and then sort of glue, glue them together over here. So, uh, similar localization, so similar uh, formula at similar equivalent push forward as we have over here. Okay, so that's your, uh, the, so that, that, that's the quantum multiplication. Can I think of these quasi maps as uh, just ordinary maps into some special uh, resolution? It's imagine some open subset uh, of your space, that's right. Yeah, that, that's why it's called quasi, so then one is maps, then one is maps to that. If it's just maps to the stack, like instead of writing pn, if you just had like cpdn plus one mod gn, that whole stack, the quasi map to pn would be a map to that stack. But I can also just think of it as sections of the bundle like you presented, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. How did that translate to just maps into some open of the variety? Uh, well, I mean, it, it has, who writes an open subset? So the, so you, yeah, so you map to the, to the quotient stack, but you want to map to x, right? Uh -huh. So you need to exclude, you know, things that are uh, not in x, but here. Uh, and uh -huh. that is done by those stability conditions. Uh -huh. right. so, so that's, you get more than just if I threw out all the singular points. That's right. Like there's certain, uh, there's certain proper, uh, you know, uh, yeah, so that you need to make them uh, proper, like there's some uh, stabilization procedure. So we can talk about that. Uh, right, so, yeah, so with that in mind, you can define quantum ring, which is going to say where it is an object. So uh, if you take a quiver of that A, like here, right, so you have, say, a quiver of that A minus one with the framing, uh, then, uh, well, you know, you have a bunch of equivalent line bundles, right? Uh, so each bundle, each OD, right, O over D will give you some rational function like that is the answer uh, for for the vertex function. So I remind you the vertex function was the effect here. We could just some uh, certain formula that involves the classical uh, key theory class, right, uh, but together with this quantum corrections. Right, so then you, see, you need to do evaluation for any for any degree d, right? So there's a like you work equivalently with respect to I was about to say you also work work equivalently with respect to uh, rotation there's these are maps from P1 to from what I can draw it. So smooth version. So this is your P1, which is the base curve C, which was mapped F to X. By the way, we also uh, act on the P1 with a C star Q action. So it leaves out two fixed points, zero and P. Right, so then you're assuming that you're young looking at maps, which are say regular affinity, uh, because of some uniformal conditions, those, those maps should be z to some power. So, so therefore, you look at the uh, bundles, which looks like O of d, right? And then each O of d bundle will give you a contribution like this. And if, if you put them all together, the vertex function begins the sum of z to the power of the power, power of what, what do d, right? It's a weighted, a weighted sum with quantum parameters multiplied by expression like this, where E, H, and G uh, come from Holmes' 
from B to itself, right, from one B to another, and from, from B to from B to W. In, in physics terms, in physics language, this is a vortex, k-theoretic vortex partition function for the fluor gauge theory, uh, where, uh, yeah, so W corresponds to fundamental high multiples, and homes from uh, VI to VJ corresponds to uh, bi fundamental bi fundamental high multiples. Okay, there are three, uh, three different distributions. So, uh, yeah, let's just keep this. Uh, the academic terms of like, so, uh, if you take a very simple period, a quotation bundle to uh, CP1, right, so it's, um, it's this quiver, we have C and C2. There's a vertex, what, vertex function if you take trivial plots, right? So what tau is just a, a unit, a tau is just one, trivial point one gamma, is given by a, um, a, a quantum hypergeometric function, phi to one, of some variables. Uh, so here A1 and A2 are equivalent parameters for uh, PL2 symmetry that acts in the framing, right? So remember, we work with respect to, we work relative to the maximum torus of the entire automorphism group of the field. So uh, if you have, so what is here? So you have Z, the quantum parameter on this node, right, this is A1 prefer. Z is the quantum parameter, uh, it's a sum over Z, and then uh, we have, uh, so there's a GL2 uh, global symmetry, and the maximal torus of GL2 is U1 oh, cross U1, And the uh, parameters A1 and A2 are equivalent parameters corresponding to, uh, to these two U1s. And then there's also H bar, right? So there's a C star H bar that acts on the potential on the potential direction. Okay. So in physics terms, uh, physics person that that very function is the following thing. It's the it's the partition function of the Kruger gauge theory on the C bar. Uh, times the circle, and this is a, it's a bit tricky. So it's not a direct product, in fact, it's a, it's a semi-direct product. So as you do the monodromy around around the origin, on this, oh, sorry, as you do the monodromy around the circle, your point is multiplied by Q. Right? So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a semi-direct product. And then uh, it's, it's a quiver gauge theory for this quiver, where there is a uh, U1 gauge field uh, with, with uh, two uh, <laughs> fundamental type multiplets of masses which are related to A1 and A2, and the H bar, or rather log of H bar, plays a role of some R symmetry for gases. So it's a, what you call it, N equals two star theory in three dimensions, which is, uh, it, it has four, four supercharges. Good. Um, now, uh, the, so this vertex function is satisfied Interesting properties. For example, they are eigenfunctions of, uh, so they solve the eigenvalue problems for the integrable systems that we had in the, on, on the left. So if you take the uh, uh, quotient bundle with a complete flag variety, so in, in this case, if, for example, if v1, v2, so v1 is equal to, if you say that in, in, in that picture, v1 is equal to 1, v2 is equal to 2, and so on, the n minus 1 is equal to n minus 1. So the ranks of those groups grow uh, by one, then it's called the, the then it's a, a complete flag, otherwise it will be a partial flag. So the, uh, the, part, the the vertex function for the complete flag is an eigen function of some let's call the trigonometric or Schneider Schneider model. Uh, so there's a there's some different operators here. So T, T sub QI is a different operator that shifts the shifts the function. So T sub Q I acting on F of uh, C I is equal to F of D I. Okay, so it shifts by Q the I argument. Uh, and then there and then there, there's some rational function. Uh, also it satisfies it in, in, in a different in a dual frame. So uh, uh, you can write the operator when it shifts uh, C variables, you can write it when it shifts A variables. And there's out that the uh, the, the, the equation still holds. So there's a it's self mirror. Self mirror under the 3D mirror symmetry. 
uh, like the difference equation exists both in A frame and, and, and in B frame. Okay. Um, and if you take a classical limit from here, meaning that when this parameter Q uh, goes to 1, right, so you take a settled point approximation of, of the work expansion, uh, then this becomes a, it just becomes, you know, the feed disappears, it just becomes H equals E, and that is in fact. Is this a Hamiltonian model? What's this model? Yes, it's a quantum it's quantum it's, quantum Yeah, so this, this is quantum Hamiltonian. So the A is a coordinates and the, these are quantum shifts. It's like, you know, in, um, in interval systems, there's a notion of relativistic interval system, when instead of the momentum you get, you have the exponential for the momentum. So, so that, that T, so this T here, think of it as exponential to uh, some parameter uh, R uh, times uh, D over DAI. I just want to make sure what kind of model it is. This is a quantum Hamiltonian model you have here was that is. Yes, yes, okay. it, it's, it's, okay. it's a quantum relativistic interval. It's interval model. Hmm. Exactly so. Exactly so. Okay. So uh, in, in, for this example, there are uh, n, n or n minus 1, depending on how you count the integral subfunction. Uh, this is the first one. This is also a Magdalena operator. There's also a few theory description. Remind me again. Is there a few theory description? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, that's why I, I had the slide. So it's a um, three dimensional theory. So they be the, the, uh, over here. Uh, um, to basically, right? So, so the drive the thing. There's a few physical description of the Hamiltonian, and there's a physical description of the eigenstate. And then there's an explanation why one is the eigenstate for the Hamiltonian. Um, so I had a paper with Coyote on this several years ago, where you can take uh, n equals two star theory in four dimensions, um, if I was in a circle, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, so the modular space of Bakke of the theory is given by, well, it's, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, Modular space of Bakke of the theory is the modular space of flat connection of the function of function forms. And those Hamiltonians are Casimirs of the B cycle monodromy. Which is like the A cycle. If you diagonalize the A cycle monodromy, you need to find diagonalities of the B cycle monodromy, and then there will be exactly this Hamiltonian. Right. Now, how do you see that B is the eigenfunction for that? Well, you take the 4B theory, uh, you put it on the uh, you put it on the boundary, uh, or like or, 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 or on the slab. So there's a boundary. So uh, you take uh, that uh, line operator that wraps the complex circle, and you move it towards the boundary, right? Uh, and then you can make this boundary. This, this boundary can make an make into an S duality wall. So as it reemerges on the other side, uh, it becomes a weakly coupled. So you can have a Wilson line, or also strongly coupled. So you have a, have a Wilson line. Uh, it becomes two line and vice versa. So in other words, so these guys are, you know, both, yeah. So this expression. Is, is, the, is the vacuum expectation value of the fundamental tooth line. Tooth vortex line, yeah, oh, sorry. It's kind of all the tooth line and then it goes to star theory. Uh, yeah, and then sort of you sort of promote it to, uh, to, an, uh, to, the, to the quantum operator. Yeah, yeah there is a bit for that. I just didn't want to go into this. Questions? Okay, oh, oh, sorry, but the space time interpretation is in which dimension? One plus one? Oh, yes, uh, well, it's zero plus one. Zero plus one, yeah. It's, you know, it's a standard uh, zero plus one dimension. So it's an interval system like like Tolot or like Tolot on the relativistic. Uh, okay, so non relativistic limit would be to Taylor expand in R. So R is one over one of the play. So there's no space space notion here in this model? Is there a space? Well, I mean, it's a quantum mechanics of n part. Oh, okay. So space for theory is an n to infinity. So they only have something one plus one. Like a hydro model of them. Great. Um, so yeah, so if you send a q to, to the, it's meant to, it's meant to be one. It should be one here. Because q is this star variable. So then you can try a formula that the uh, quantum K theory ring, equivalent quantum K theory of that, that variety is certain phenomenal algebra modular relations, which are exactly the equations of motion for, for this trigonometric RS model. If you're familiar with classical results by Kevin Tyler Lee, so they had uh, 
following thing. And they said that the quantum key theory of flat variety itself is some also some polynomial algebra modular equations of motion for q toda flat. Right. So what what it does here this uh, up, this is an upgrade from uh, flag to the quotation model for the flag, and then it sort of for that means upgrade the toda to the to the to the TRS model. So it, it's a statement in the same way. You, you probably remember to in Tarsky down, right? Because that's uh, uh, along the lines of this. So we use different quantification, but it turns out that as you uh, say, to get to get to given tau, if you wish, you can take this parameter h bar and send it to infinity, right? So well, well, let's see what it does. You, h bar is if you are in quotation, if you are in dilation, uh, dilation of the fiber. As you send h bar to infinity, what you do, you effectively shrink the fiber to a point. Like you can say, like if you are in volume, like whatever it means, right? It's one way h bar. It, it goes to zero. So topologically, you retract the fiber down, and you should expect that. Well, you, should, you should expect to produce a result when there was no fiber present at all. It turns out that this limit is tricky, right? Because when you, when you do your quantum curve counting, curve go, can go, you know, can go in potential direction, can come back, it can do various things, and the, the, the answer still remembers that fact even in the limit. So you need to do some careful scaling. Okay. Okay. So how are we good? So like that. So that was the part about quantum geometry. So now. Uh, there's a second second story on what, what algebra, right? So, uh, I'll try to be quick here without you know too much uh, too much creation. So, yeah, we, we talked about. So yeah, basically, no, uh, nothing. If you want to move, type type slow. Yeah, yeah, you don't right. move. So, uh, so basically, the, the, the problem is you give me like the uh, announcement. What, what what comes next? So those vertex functions uh, from quantum K theory, their states, right? And now I want some. Algebra that acts on that acts in different space of states. I have some of them, so that they're Newtonians, but also I want, you know, I want the full algebra. So I want some Raisin operators, some Lorian operators, and this is what this little comes in. Good. So, uh, the, the, so it turns out that this, this uh, trigonometric RS operators they form a maximal commutative sub algebra in, in the following case in uh, spherical. Uh, double by K algebra for, uh, for for GLN. Now, what is what what is what, what just what's called AM for short? <coughs> what, what, what is this algebra? Well, okay, so because uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll take the space that I just uh, I was describing the modular space, the local system on the torus, the modular space of flat GLN C connections on the torus with one puncture. Um, and you do the uh, deformation quantization of the modular space in certain complex structure. So that's a page by Hoffman, which says that the yes, yeah, so we have what is the how this local system is described. You have matrices, which satisfy the fundamental group relation on the torus, uh, and then you assume that the each bar parameter, which you have over here, is the single non-trivial eigenvalue of the matrix C. So. Uh, as I was explaining to to Joanne before, you can diagonalize A, di diagonalize A, so the eigenvalues of A will be this equivalent parameters, and then you can ask what the, what are the eigenvalues of B. So turns out the eigenvalues of B will be exactly this uh, TRS commutation. But uh, there's more than that, right? Because, you know, uh, so uh, here, here here is an example of what happens in. Okay, let me skip that for a sec. So. Uh, let's take a, a SU2 theory again, right? So we have three matrices A, B, and C. So let, let me introduce, let's introduce Cajun variant coordinates on the on, on this uh, uh, local system. Uh, so X is trace A, think of it as an electric line operator. Then B is a trace Y is trace B, it's a magnetic, and then C is the C is the dionic operator. Okay, if you work out the algebra, so that equation for the flattens for the flattens condition. Looks like this. Um, so this is so this is so-called marked up cubic. <coughs> See, it's a cubic in C two, right? Uh, there's a cu cubic equation over here, uh, which you can yeah, 
after you apply the non abelian hash correspondence, what cannot go into that, not cannot go into that, the, this is the, the modular special potential sum of right variety like this. And in, in, in the case when each bar goes to one, right, the right hash is just a number, but MN is a is this a pillowcase space. It's the C star cross C star mod C2. You have the second wheel like a pillow with four similarities. Uh, and as you turn turn on the bar, you sort of you blow you blow up those similarities. Um, so after you after you use the blow up, you get to you should think of it as an elliptic vibration. So there's let's say you can pick one of the coordinates and then uh, at, uh, as an elliptic vibration over one dimensional complex space. Right? It's an, Space of complex dimension two. Uh, at the generic fiber, generic point on the base, we have an elliptic curve, uh, and then at the origin, uh, we have a singularity. Right. So if you do the full uh, blow up, if you do blow up all, all singularities, then the, uh, uh, the 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 exceptional divisor here will look like uh, it, it has the shape of uh, a fine tuned in D four diagram, D three D three diagram. A fine or S O A, and it's not surprising because the, 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 the vibration is of Kadair type by zero star. And so this is some idea of, of how the geometry of Oren one looks like. Okay. Um, so this is a classical space. Now we need to do the quantization. Right? So if you do the quantization, well, again, so there's this. Uh, Brains and quantization story, which I don't think I have time to. Let me just show you the point of this. So you have a half hour. Half hour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, so okay, well, let me skip the brain and quantization part. So then, uh, I'm going to write the commutator. So after you do the quantization, whichever way you do it, ask me later about brains, you get, you get, you get this relation. So the Q commutator uh, of x and y is z multiplied by this factor. That disappears when q goes to one, and then it's cyclic. It's cyclic. Like there's a full circuit. So we like we like commutators for 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 spherical data, and uh, I, I'm doing this paper with uh, Gukov, uh, Nawata, Sabieri, somebody else, uh, where we sort of studied in in in, 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 in great details. In particular, we show that the well, we have a conjecture which we sort of show that it works in, in red one, is that if you take a uh, Fukai category of the polyoid space uh, with a certain symplectic form, then as a category, it's isomorphic to the representation category of the algebra. So basically, you take the space, you do the deformation quantization of that space, you get some algebra. It turns out that all, all, all modules of the algebra, they have a geometric origin as, as expected. But but when you say it in a category language, you just go right assume there's a lot of structure to it, right? So the objects here goes to objects there, and the morphisms here goes to morphisms there. Okay? So in particular, we can take uh, well the actually we might one example. So the uh, the we can take some compact uh, cycle, say this big big ball in the middle. We can sort of compute its volume in uh, units of h bar of Planck's constant, and that volume should be equal to the dimension of some uh, module, uh, some finite dimensional representation uh, that, that we get from the algebra. Okay. And, then, and then you can see, so you get the semi equivalent formula for the, model, for the, for the volume. Uh, so you can study representations independently. I, I, I'll show you some representations later. Any questions about that now? Okay. Basically, the part of the dictionary is that finite dimensional representations correspond to compact frames, infinite dimensional representations correspond to non compact frames, and sort of the intersection uh, numbers here, uh, and the Lagrangian disks on the Fukai side, would correspond to some morphisms uh, on the representation side. Okay, well, let's talk about representations a little bit. So, um, and in, in, in the context of the two work. So, now, so, so that was data for, yeah, so uh, again, let, let's take our period quiver, T star of complete flag, right? And then uh, remember, so it has equivalent parameters here uh, on the node. Then we specify these equivalent parameters to certain lattice, right? So it's Q to 
to the power of lambda sub k. So for lambda sub k, so is the uh, height of some column in a Dinky diagram lambda, uh, in, the, in, the, in the young diagram lambda. So uh, lambda sub k is the, is, is the height of the column. So it's due to some integer times each part of n minus k. Uh, and uh, if you do that, the, ver the, the vertex function from the k theory part of the talk truncates. Right? So it's, a, it's an infinite series, but if you, if you, sort of, if you do this relation, it truncates to a polynomial. So uh, this is this is so-called McDonald's polynomial. <coughs> polynomials, McDonald's polynomials are classified by uh, by young diagrams. So this is the, this is the construction of the Hilbert space, right? So the uh, Hilbert space of well, in, in question is constructed out of uh, McDonald's polynomials, uh, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with a certain uh, lattice here, which on which we evaluate the parent parameters. Uh, so uh, let me describe what was the mod modulus of that in, in, in some in, in more detail. So uh, remember, we had x, y, and z. So we could construct raising operator and lowering operator. So if you take so this, so this is your model, you can you can take and show that the uh, you can raise up, the raising operator goes this way, the lowering operator goes that way, and then. Uh, it, it may happen that if you act with the lower operator, uh, it, you, you can get zero. So it turns out that once this condition is satisfied, uh, this operator is trivial uh, for, for, for certain values of k, and then that gives you a uh, sub module, sub representation, right? And what remains is a factor representation. So there's some finite dimensional factor which you, which you can match against uh, that uh, picture with, uh, with five with five CP ones. Right? So in this, in this example, we have three-dimensional finite sub-representations. So there's some sh short exact sequence of modules, uh, and it should match the volume of some compact cycle, some compact one uh, on the on the right side. But, but anyhow, so okay, my own polynomials they form the basis, uh, their states in the Hilbert space. Uh, and because we, and now using this fact, you can construct it in various uh, explicit way. So uh, now, so we're going to switch bases from uh, z to, to this power symmetric variables pm. So just look at m's power, so p sub p sub m is m power of sum of all z's. And then you can rewrite my own polynomials of these p bases. Okay? As you do so, so you start off with a form vacuum, zero. Uh, and then uh, all excited states, they come from each piece of lambda, right? Uh, so where piece of lambda is just a product of it's most a sub a minus lambda, right? So it's a creation operator that acts in the vacuum, and just the product of creation operators with the corresponding numbers. So this lambda, lambda one to lambda l are you know, heights of the uh, heights of the, of the columns in, in, in the in the diagram. And more importantly, the optimization relation. Uh, so it's, so the, the, this operator is of a uh, q q a bar, so the w d form. Heisenberg algebra relations. Instead of just having each bar here, you get some more, more, more complicated rational functions. Have you seen this commentator before? Well, those who write papers on the UT Paul algebras, maybe they have. But, uh, that's exactly the, the guy we will have. So remember at the beginning of the talk, I promised you that there will be some large n transition. So what we're going to see, this is so far that half was some finite n. Now we can send n to infinity. And the commutators will still, will still remain the same. So uh, um, the algebra arises from geometry. So there will be some. So the, the, the vertex of the algebra arises from some sort of nice geometric construction. Okay. I hope that that point will become clear. Okay. Honestly, none of this math is helping me. It's just like random formulas. Like, is there like a physical explanation of what you want to claim and just? Like establishing it through drawing some brains or something, and being like this gauge theory to something and some transition. Or yeah, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you the, the Can you just tell me now, and then like I'll be able to follow the math a lot better. Like, what what is the thing that you want to establish? Like, what's your claim? Well, no, no. Uh, so okay, that, that means that the quantum K theory part wasn't clear. So no, it, I, I don't I, care about the quantum K theory after you write. Like quantum K theory is a thing. What are you trying to tell me about it? That it gives you the basis. Uh, 
in the Hilbert space. Okay? So, the, the quantum, so that, that ring, the quantum field theory, I want to think of that quantum field theory as the Hilbert space. Okay, great. So could you just tell me a statement about a physical 40n equals 2 field theory? And then I'll be like, great, that's a statement about a physical field theory, and then okay. you'll tell me why it should feel nice about this. Good. Uh, good. Let's get here. It seems like it's like didn't like uh, when we do um, Okay, let's do, let, let's do this slide first, okay? So um, let's do the transition. Good. So start, start off with an M theory on S1 cross CQ cross C bar, right? Cross the deformed conic bar. Okay. Now, and then you put M5 rings okay. all here. So here is the zero section of the thing. Uh, and you put, you also need to put some boundary conditions properly so that the corresponding gauge theory is the quiver that we studied. Okay. okay. Um, so we get a quiver gauge theory from the key theory part of the talk. Uh, and now I want to send N to infinity. Well, what are you going, going to get on the other side? We're going to, have, we're going to get the result when you put, right? We're going to have uh, S1 plus uh, sort of this 5D five dimensional space times Y, which is the result of one. What is it called? Why did H bar become T? But it's a typo, yeah. It's okay. the same one, yeah. So okay, I think uh, yeah, H bar is T equals Right. So uh, you have, you have uh, M theory on the result kind of uh, Yeah, and now you can sort of, it's a local color. Yeah, you can compa uh, compactify, but you, you can reduce on Y. Uh, the eleven D supergravity, right? As you do that, so which fields are in eleven D supergravity? You have a metric, we have a three form, and we have a dealer one. Mm -hmm. uh, you can show that metric and uh, dealer one decouple; they freeze out because they move to zero. Right. But uh, uh, the, the, the three form, so as in three three form over C T one, uh, which is in the base over here. So this is the Fibrations if you want. Mm -hmm. You get one form. Okay. So that's one form is the gauge field uh, in 5D and gauge field. So before the transition, we had quiver gauge, super symmetric quiver gauge theory with some matter. After the transition, we got uh, five dimensional and it was uh, five dimensional young mills with a super -tier. Are you saying it's five dimensional rather than? I mean, or? if you do M theory, that you know, it's, it leaves on, there's a circle here. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, so we work in K theory, so everything is like you always have the circle somewhere. Okay, great. So both stories are five dimensional on a circle cross CQ cross CQ. That's right. That's okay, right. fine. Uh, and it, 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 as you notice, the K theory section also has a circle. Right. You can all reformulate everything as homology, but that's okay. Anyhow, so that's the. Uh, that's the that's the resolve side. So we uh, yeah, resolve side is the deform side. Okay. Now, uh, claim is that the this uh, elliptical algebra is directed right, over here. So that's what you study uh, instantons, non-commutative to one instantons, uh, modular space to one instantons, and then elliptical algebra acts on equivalent K theory of that. Is it possible to say more directly what the elliptical algebra is as a physical construction? Uh, so, uh, I think the goal of the talk was to, to do that using k equivalent k theory. So, okay. so, so, that's so. not physics, that's math. Right? Equivalent k theory is math. If you interpret that as like the states are vertex, vertices or something, that's physics. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I can create. So, uh, well, good. so yeah, I, I can give you that answer in that form. So, but let, well, let's show that, uh, the, the, the actual thing. So, the so we study uh, so Hilbert's space Hilbert's scheme of k points on C two so that's the modular space of k instantons on R four right um, and you study covariant k theory of that space so this elliptical algebra acts on that okay. uh, now the the, the uh, so that's what mathematicians knew before what I'm saying the, the, the Kleinfeld transition allows you to show that right so in the first part of the talk I well. I was supposed to show that Daha, okay, I can show, okay, so, so Daha acts on K theory of the quiver variety. I don't know if this is physical to me yet, but okay. the left-hand side I kind of understand physically, but. Good, 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 good. so, okay. and then I'll give you some more uh, brains on over here, okay? Good. So, I will agree on this statement for now. Yes. Good, 
Uh, and now I take this table and apply it to the limit. So it's a plane. Uh, so these fellows show that that guy appears in state limit from that half. Okay. And this space is, let's get, that space is that some truncation of that space. So I understand the, the, the story in complete detail over here. That's fine again, both physically and mathematically. Uh -huh. And I take the large number. So why is the elliptic Hall algebra the <coughs> physical algebra that acts on the space of states on the right-hand side? Oh, the... I don't give that answer directly here. I give it indirectly here at that point. Right, so I, 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 I explain that part, and then I just take large n. Okay, great. So you're just saying the large n limit of the algebras that act on the finite n states from the Cover gauge theory point of view, whatever that algebra turns out to be, and it turns out to be the elliptical algebra, that needs to act on the space of states from the uh, y point of view. That's right. Okay. Gotcha. That's, that, that's the idea. And then, uh, you know, are you familiar with the hook up with the brazen quantitation story? Yes. Yes. Uh, the, way you, you direct, the way you show how uh, Daha acts on, on the spaces, it's the standard algebra, which is a homo BCC BCC, which the algebra have canonical points of the frames, and you have uh, Lagrangian frames, which are called the prime, so the prime corresponds to states. Right? You can there's a string between BCC and the prime, and then uh, if you join BCC BCC string with BCC the prime string, you get the action of the algebra on uh, on, 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 on the spaces. Yeah, so this, this, is, this, this is geometric. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. It's not first understood somewhere. <laughs> well, I, I agree. It's, it's a bit overwhelming to take one in one of four. Seems full of questions. No, I, I don't think it's overwhelming. I think it's just useful if you say what you're trying to establish, like give the physical argument, and then you can translate it into. No, I don't, had I not skipped a couple of slides, I think it would, be, it would, it would have gone smoothly. So the. Um, oh, all these slides, I'd just be like, why are we doing all of this? Now, now I think I get it. <laughs> Oh, but you're supposed to be a mathematician. You're supposed to be kind of about k theory stuff, not about brain stuff. <laughs> no, I'm, this I'm is a physics seminar, right? right? Yeah. I think this is a physics seminar, and like all three of these guys are physicists. I think you might be a mathematician. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I had an apologetic slide. <laughs> 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 I actually wanted to get from give you a math talk, but uh, all the numbers are too much. So good. So the uh, right. <laughs> Anyhow, so that's, a, I like that picture a lot. It's sort of, there's a lot of representation theory here, like uh, virtualities. Anyhow, let's talk about the other algebras. And then, yes, yeah, so also in the past, like if you're familiar with this story, the McClellan polynomials can form a basis of fixed points on the C star cross C star action in that case. Like, it's a natural, uh, you know, natural uh, uh, basis in, uh, in, 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 in so, um, yeah, and then yeah, one, one, one more physics interpretation for I should have said it in the beginning. So what does this thing, actually, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I should, I should have said this because my red eye flies and everything. So the, what does this algebra, algebra do? So what is an instanton? Instanton is a equations, solution of equations, uh, some of equations, equation with some boundary conditions. So uh, instanton has a topological charge, right, which is some integral over the infinite sphere. Now, what this, what the raising operators on this algebra do, they raise that topological charge. So they do some large gauge transformation of the bound, of the change boundary conditions at infinity, so that the integral becomes from k jumps to k plus one. But the lower in operators in this algebra, they decrease the topological charge. Uh, in a nutshell, that's how it works. In, in you know, in, in full glory, in, in all the details, you know, you have a young diagram, and then you can. There's like an operation which allows you to take a box and put it here. Or you can say, take two boxes, put one here, put one there. Uh, there's some long terminatorial formula that Andre Nico likes to write. Uh, but yeah, essentially, in, in a nutshell, that, that, that's what it does. But Dahla does the same thing only with vortices, right? So we have vortex solution of Bagamoyan equations in the plane. It has boundary conditions of infinity. And so, so to change the vorticity, you need to change those boundary conditions. And exactly how it's done is what uh, is hidden in, in the details of the algebra. So you raise the political sector by as many means as you want to keep it forward.
I see. So then the, the statement that this diagram commutes, so to speak, is the adding a vortex over here and then going through the conifold transition is equivalent to instant time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So right. And so vortices on here corresponds to instant time there. In some non trivial way. And you can see this by the like set and brains on top of the M theory geometry. That's right. Very nice. Uh, in one of my physics papers, I really have like you know this Hanani Witten type brain picture and then I show that if you take n to infinity there's some some transition going on, and you can actually see that vortices there correspond to like the uh, T2D6 system, which I used to on software. Excellent. Okay. All right. Five minutes, ten minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, right. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about W algebra. Okay, so this is the summary table. Uh, okay, I guess, well, we need like ten minutes for that slide on, so let's let's move. Okay, what we see is just like it's an addition to what we discussed, so this is the ADHM quiver, right, for the Resolve side. Uh, that's the quiver, the uh, Nakajima quiver for the deform side. And then there's some material match between the quiver and the parameter. Uh, yeah, so if, if there are any grown up written enthusiasts, um, you can take the integral system here, this RS model, and deform it to the elliptic case. So if you field can make the elliptic deformation, there's a little elliptic parameter P. And you study the spectrum of that model. As you carry this through the larger transition, what you end up having is quantization of that ring. So in other words, so, so far I discussed classical P theory on the ADHM side. If you do the elliptic model, you 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 have got so you get quantum uh, uh, quantum model. So you can literally say that okay, I know what is the eigenvalue of a quantum multiplication by some class in that theory, and it's given by some well, you need to take the class and substitute their solutions of some basic okay, So there's a the, so duality is very non-trivial. So the equivalent parameters we kind of map uh, very indirectly. So for example, the H bar here, which was sort of dilating the fibers, now corresponds to it's now one of the equivalent parameters uh, in C2. And then the elliptic parameter of an integral system corresponds to the uh, quantum parameter in the HM side. Good. Now, clear W algebras. Uh, okay, really quick. So, you see the same idea, right? So, now we have we have done a lot of, uh, of preparation, so we can just state 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 result. So, the the, the, the net of partition function for the quiver. So, take quiver gauge theory, say in five dimensions, uh, on this space time, and you can write rewrite it as a as an operator that acts on the on some quiver space. So, then basically, rules are pretty much the same as I told you in the data section. There's some basically some monomials that become creation operators, and there's one quantum dictionary between these monomials and states uh, in the box space. And now you should, you should see that uh, this 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 should look familiar. It's the same rational function in, in, in the current state. In a natural way, that's what it is, right? So if W algebra what they, they have, so they have their own way to, to, to drive it, this using this free field representation. Um, you can get the same algebra by taking that large limit that I was talking about. So let's in, in more details what you do, uh, you take uh, different moduli space and do a quantization and different complex structure. But in the end of the day you get the same algebra after some duality. So the uh, yeah, so they have space of periodic monopoles uh, with some direct similarities and that we algebra is the deformation quantization in what complex structure uh, a certain twist of parameters which is the, uh, such that the twist of parameters eta is equal to epsilon two divided by epsilon one. Uh, it's uh, you have to tune the twist of parameter as you change those entities. Okay, and then uh, it's, it's the full PW algebra. So if you have a quick quiver like this, it's the full PW algebra, modulus certain parasol constraints that basically tells you that once you get to a certain level, all the all the generators that get to you, because ranks of the loops are finite. And as you send those ranks to infinity, you 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 get the full value out. Right? So all these constraints will be pushed off to infinity. And, uh, yeah, you'll get the full answer. So okay, let me skip that. Uh, but let me show the origami picture. So good. What what is what is what is gauge origami? So in other words, how to show that Kimur Preston's story and ours is the same thing. Well, uh, let's take the following setup. So we take 
Well, let's look at the right picture on the right. So take rough, yeah, take to B theory on Calabial 4, which is just you know, R8, with four epsilons. Some of them is equal to zero. Uh, cross a sigma. A sigma is just some curve on the Freeman surface. And, uh, well, so D3 is a three-point is a four-dimensional uh, frame, so we can wrap it on any uh, two given uh, complex lines in the set. Right? So the overall, there are a four choose two options. Right? So there's like, six different arrangements. You can, and then you can put as many different frames on any of those uh, subsets of two lines as you want. So for, for the purposes of, 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 of this exposition, let's put uh, n sub one two brains on lines one uh, on, on, on this subspace and n sub one three on, well, on, on on this subspace. Right? And then they all uh, kind of overlap at, uh, uh, at, 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 at complex line number one. Okay. Now, uh, to be more specific, let's say n12 is equal to n, and n13 is equal to 2. And in addition, we add an orbital. So we take an, a, a Gaussian orbital to this, to, to this background, like this, with just an an singularity uh, on the, uh, in the 2 and 4, uh, 2 and 4 subspace. Well, now, the observer on uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 plane the following theory. He or she sees n equals one star, so it's a uh, star dimension. So it's a theory with uh, eight supercharges with adjoint matter in, in five dimensions in the presence of the defect. So if these are the P1 and 2 planes, uh, because of this orbital, it gives, it provides some defect degrees of freedom uh, along, along one of the complex lines. I didn't have time to explain it, but I mean, you can, well, it's more or less a uh, once you study this orbital, it's more or less follows, uh, well, follows directly. Okay. Now, what does the uh, observer on the other space see? Well, he or she would see the uh, uh, AAB a a a space, right? It's the it's the ZN orbital. Sure. Well, he sees a defect because of the abelian orbital, or just because he yes, inserted... because it's a, so you live in space one and two. Yeah. There's only one omega along the second line. Okay. So uh, there's some Zn action around the center here, okay. and then the action fractionalizes instantons. That's good. There's some. Oh, oh, just a defect at the center. Or, no, uh, it's it's oh, in here and then it wraps down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah. because of the Z action here, there's some fractionalization going on, and that provides some you know boundary conditions. Another one, so that gives some vortices as, uh, on, on on the defect. Basically, so here you have instantons plus vortices, and vortices on this green plane is what. I was talking about the K-theory effects part of the talk. Uh, so, right, so that's the first thing. And, and the second guy who sees on one and three, he or she sees the AV orbital like this. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's an intersection. Okay. Now, uh, if you identify the parameters for the K-1 parameters of quantum parameters of K-theory, they are the same as the Fayette of those parameters of, of the river. Uh, in here, they play the role of the gauge coupling, gauge couplings of all those nodes. Okay. And then there's a parameter Q without gamma, which was the instant on parameter of the gauge theory, and here is one of the couplings. Okay, now you send you, you send it to zero. You compute you compute the origami partition function, just open the process paper and compute it. And then you can take two limits. You can set first send Q to zero and epsilon two, the equivalent parameter in the second line to zero. Okay, so once you do that, two things will happen. So if it has, so where's the coupling? Because the coupling goes to zero, I, I don't have the gauge degree of freedom anymore, I just have a theory on the defect. And that's what we talked about before, the gauge theory of the data set. Here, this U2 becomes global, and the affine quiver becomes finite. Uh, yeah, and the the partition functions of, on those quivers are related by the Fourier transform. So uh, basically, the the, the, uh, the 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 you can compute partition function, function here to some change of variables which correspond to rotating brains uh, in the, rotating the PQF 
uh, in the uh, by 90 degrees. And after that, you'll get, uh, you know, if you have n nodes here, after the rotation, you'll get un gh theory. So, uh, in other words, whatever you compute from the, this uh, uh, quiver, so that's the uh, cumulative factor story, uh, you'll get some w from the quiver, the kind of construction, will be the same as computing, uh, computing the, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, it's the, it's good. Uh, the computation on the defect and the computation in, uh, in the, uh, uh, in, in the square are equivalent up to S12. Right? So, 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 so that, that's why if you look at the computation relations in, in Peston's formula, in our formula, you can, you can just match Q1 and Q2 in Peston to Q and H bar in our formula and you will get the exact match. So I didn't have time to explain in detail how the QW, QW algebra works, but in a nutshell, it's the same. There's some there's some operators, there are some, some, operators, there are some low operators. Uh, the details are a bit different, but uh, I hope I convinced you that it all comes down to the same uh, the same algebra once you look at look at this you know, from the broader perspective. So this is what gauge where you got. It's like some generalization of uh, ADH in construction to uh, modern uh, ones. Once a scale, right? Okay, I think uh, this is probably more than enough, so I can stop here. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah, I put the slides on my web page. So and the slides are emailed. That's always the code, so. Okay, yeah, great. So we're going to have a launch upstairs. Thank you, Peter. Where's the text? Where's the text? I told the last one. I told the last one. Yes, we have their own seminar. I don't have that much time to like, know if different people will take me for lunch or for dinner. Oh, okay. So I need